Welcome back to Exotic Car Play Place, everybody. Thanks for joining in again today. Today we have to ask the question, why would you drive an unreliable BMW like this 335 or an E60 M5, or even a 550 for that matter? Why would you drive a car like this? There's a few reasons why you would, and let's get into it now. Welcome back to the channel, everybody. Mark with Exotic Car Play Place, and today I'm so how did we get to the point where we drive these unreliable cars? Well, it's largely because of our experiences and our exposures to life and some of the things around us. Now, for years and years, I drove cars. I had Mazdas and I drove Toyotas. And I really did like those vehicles because they were pretty dependable. Although they weren't perfect, some of them burned oil at lower Ks and some of them leaked. They weren't perfect, but they turned the key and they would go every single time. So there was something to like about them. Then I moved into Mazdas and I started driving sporty cars. For example, like a Mazda RX-7 was one of my first sporty cars. And I really enjoyed it. I thought it was the best thing since sliced bread. And honestly, at that time, I really believed it was the coolest car. Then I got myself a little Fiat X19. Yes, I know you guys are gonna all say they're gross cars. They're horribly unreliable. And yeah, Fiat's not great. It had electrical problems. You have to smash the dash just so the tachometer would rework sometimes. Uh, it didn't shift very well at times. I know it had a lot of different issues, but there was an inherent flavor and a character that could not be denied. So I did fall in love with it. It was a real character car. And anybody in their right mind would condemn the car and call it the biggest piece of crap. But I wasn't in my right mind because when you start to drive cars that are based on passion, the sense sort of goes out the window at times. And then that brings me to my next experience. And that was in my first Porsche 911. Actually, I had a friend who bought one. And when we first picked it up, I went with him. He first received the car. I went for the first maiden voyage. And after that, I was like, this RX-7 is done. I need a 911. And trust me when I said, I was converted. And it didn't matter to me if you had to adjust the valves in a 911. It didn't matter to me that it took 11 quarts of synthetic oil. And it didn't matter to me that they were very expensive to replace parts on and only select dealers should be working on them. It didn't matter, I didn't care at the time. All I wanted to do was get behind the wheel of a Porsche 911. And it didn't take me long to figure out, yep, yeah, RX-7 gone and I bought myself a 911. I then realized that, man, I really believe those were the best cars since the second coming. Then I had some friends that bought BMWs and that was my first experience with an inline six powered BMW. Once I had the taste of that, I thought it wasn't better than the 911, but it brought a whole new perspective on what refinement and performance can actually feel like. Now we were leagues ahead of the RX-7. Now the RX-7 was a great car and I loved it for what it was, was a relatively low cost performance alternative. But then I started driving Porsches and BMWs and everything else was in the rear view mirror for me. I tried going back, I drove a later model RX-7 twin turbo when those came along, and although I really enjoyed it and I liked it, it still didn't quite have the magic that a 911 had, even a less powered 911. Even got into a late 70s 911 or an early 80s 911 with 185 horsepower, and a car, that car still had way more character and pizzazz than that RX-7 with 255 horsepower ever could have. And that just brought me to where I'm at today. And that is effectively driving these unreliable cars, not because I'm a glutton for punishment. And I'm sure most of you guys out there that are driving 335s, 535s, M5s, Porsche 911s, Alfa Romeos, Quadrifoglios, Maseratis, any of the above, aforementioned Jaguars, there's a reason you guys drive these cars and it has nothing to do with what you believe is the most reliable car on the planet. Who gives a damn what's reliable at that point? For those that have never experienced a Porsche 911 Turbo under full thrust, or those who have never experienced the whale of a V10 Lamborghini, or those who have never experienced the silky smooth straight six of a BMW, you guys are missing out. It doesn't matter about reliability because reliability is a small factor. Yes, it still has to run, but some of those other little inefficiencies and deficiencies that pop up with these cars don't seem to matter quite as much when you drive a car that is built for passion. 
And that's what we're all about, is driving the cars that are exciting, fun, and really exploit the passion inside. Who cares if it's not JD Powers and Associates' best choice? Who gives a shit about that? We're driving these cars because they're fun, you only live once, and honestly, life's too short to drive boring cars like Toyota Tercels and Camrys, which really are great cars for what they deliver, and that's reliability and dependability. But there's much more to life than that, guys. And you know that, and I know that. And that's why we get stuck in this rut of driving these fun performance cars that are slightly less than perfectly reliable. And that's why I'm driving a 335 or an M5 or a Lamborghini. I didn't go out there selectively, actively looking for the most unreliable piece of crap I can buy. I search for the best vehicle to drive that delivers the best level of performance and fun and with a little bit of dollars in mind. So guys, I really hope you see it my way because really that's what life's all about, enjoying the fruits and the nectar of life. So on that note guys, everybody, be sure to drop me a line down below. I'd like to hear your reason for driving a car if in fact you drive a car like a BMW or a Benz or an Audi, maybe even an Italian car like a, an Alfa Romeo or Maserati. Why would you drive a car like that? You know well there's no shortage of information that there are vehicles like these that have compromised reliability. I'd love to hear from you guys. Drop a line below and don't forget to subscribe. Hope to see you soon. Catch you then. Bye-bye.